Hello, I'm Malcolm Haslett. Why is human history so important to an ever-evolving community? Well, we'll find out more next on Our Time. Welcome to Our Time. Do you know, I could honestly say I'm a bit of a history buff because you know those old sayings about uh, if you don't understand where we came from, you've no idea where we're going. We're going to make the same mistakes more than once. Well, Greg Mackey, the CEO of the History Trust of South Australia, is my very special guest. Welcome, Greg. Thank you, Malcolm. Not and for the first time, it's fortunately. It's not the first time. No, I'm very pleased to be back. Now, your official position at the moment is the CEO of the History Trust. Yes. What What really is that? Just explain. Sure. So the Please. History Trust of South Australia is 40 years old this year. We were established Same as me. under an Act of Parliament. <laughs> taking a little bit of licence there, Malcolm. <laughs> uh, established under an Act of Parliament, the History Trust of South Australia Act mm. in 1981. And... Uh, it has oversight and responsibility for a number of museums in South Australia, uh, most notably the Migration Museum in the city on Kintore Avenue, the National Motor Museum at Birdwood in the Adelaide Hills, the South Australian Maritime Museum at Port Adelaide, and relatively more recently, 2017, the Centre of Democracy, which is a little gallery in the Institute building on the corner of North Terrace and Kintour Avenue. We've actually talked about that on the program, and I never knew that existed. And just about a month ago, we talked about the Holocaust Museum yeah. as well. Absolutely. The Adelaide Holocaust Museum and Andrew Steiner Education Centre only opened its doors late last year. It would have been November, I think, yes. or December. But the location is so interesting, next to the cathedral, right in the heart of the city. Next to St Francis Xavier Cathedral, and we believe it is the first time in the world and in history that the Catholic Church has created a special place for remembering the Holocaust mm. uh, and therefore some, a place that's of very great importance emotionally uh, for Jewish people but also for a number of other minorities who were persecuted and executed uh, during the, yes, the but Nazi Holocaust. Yes, but it's also a great reminder, let's not let this happen again. Absolutely. With the politics of the world going the way they are, you yeah. know, you sort of wonder, will this hap could this happen again? And yeah. we've obviously, the world's just gone through that period that's exactly right. Well, you know, our federal treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, himself of Jewish uh, ancestry, has made a particular thing of ensuring that there's funding available to every capital, in every capital city, that there can be a place of memory and of storytelling and mm. sharing to help keep the memory of the Holocaust alive in order to, to discourage people from developing attitudes of, of racial intolerance is that it, can lead to tragedy. Absolutely. Is it because, it's got nothing to do with the subject we're really talking about, but as we're going down that path, do you think, is it because human nature needs to follow people who have big voices? Because in a way that's sort of what it is, isn't it? And that's the thing I said at the beginning. If you don't know where we came from, we'll all make the same mistakes again. History... Um, Look, traditionally, history has been written by and celebrates the victors uh, mm. through, throughout, uh, throughout the journey of human existence. However, increasingly, the study of history is turning into a far more diverse, a far more rich and interesting and diverse uh, uh, set of, of positions uh, and parts of conversations because we all know that there is seldom only one real truth. There are many truths that are subjective truths uh, that people people have opinions. And you know, one person's one event's victor is another event's loser. Um, and mm. we 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 owe it to our children, and we owe it to the future children uh, to ensure that there is as much documented about our human existence and, and the mm. journey uh, so that we can make better decisions in years to come. That's at least what gets me out of bed in the morning. Well, absolutely. I was just thinking the comparison between, um, so Australian rules football as an example, there's always a winner and a loser. And in the commentary that happens after that, there's always, well, this should have happened or that could have happened. The reality is somebody won the match. And in life, particularly in, in wars, as yes. we're talking about the Holocaust, 
clearly there must have been good people in Germany at the time with, with in a way, bad people trying to change the world. There are, sadly, always bad people who are hungry for power, hungry for and power. will abuse uh, the, mm. the privilege of power once, it, once it's achieved. We have, it's not only people, you know, it's not only goose stepping uh, soldiers in Nazi, Nazi. uniforms. Mm. There, there was an entire population who were hypnotised by uh, Adolf Hitler. But isn't Nazi. that what's just happened in America, really? Which is, Absolutely. you know, don't you see me, history. Don't get me started on No, well, on don't, the, me neither, because I feel very passionate about that whole thing. Let's get back to you. So becoming the CEO of the History Trust has been a very long journey from you, uh, for you. I remember talking with you before and we only went back as far as the bookshop what happened before the you had a bookshop mm, so j just for for this is your history for change uh, benefit so in 1984 my family opened imprints booksellers in Hindley Street in the city we were in the most unusual part of town it was the place where the rent was cheapest and of course those <laughs> of us who who grew up in in Adelaide in the 50s and 60s and 70s remember Hindley Street and the West End as the gathering place for all of the tribes of Adelaide, or all, all of all and of Sin Adelaide. Central. There was Sin Central, but there was also cinema, entertainment, oh, yes, everything, amusement parlours. Yep. So many restaurants and cafes. I mean, yep. the first gelati in Australia was in Hindley Street. Pizzas, uh, probably pizzas, too. Pizzas. Yeah. Uh, um, yet Marcelina, I think, yes. can lay claim to uh, having ha having bought and the first. And we've pizza. also talked about uh, downtown, which was sort of the first. Uh, Ga machine, machine games. Machine games mm. place, yeah, absolutely. And that had previously been a theatre. Yes. And then a cinema. Yes. Uh, and that I remember journey, going there as a teenager to see the movies. And and um, those of us of a certain age will remember West's uh, theatre uh, which and West's cinema, which yeah. then became part of the Greater Union uh, Hindley Street complex and mm -hmm. they had two or three cinemas there. Yep. That is now, that then became Time Zone Meridian, which was an, another massive amusement parlour with ice sk roller skating, etc. And then it's now home for uh, the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra. So, And what a, a lot journey. of people don't know about that was originally it was called the Winter Garden That's and correct. it still has the fly gallery at the back because they had half and half, live shows and the That's movies. That's correct, yes. We were just talking recently about the cinemas in Adelaide that have now gone. And there's, um, there's an organisation starting to make documentaries about all of those things. Just we have such a rich history in this particular town, and obviously so you do in Melbourne, um, that because it's such a short history, we don't really know much about our history. So what you're involved with, is this part of the purpose, if you like? Yeah, look, I mean, the government of the time, the Tonkin government mm. in South Australia um, had commissioned a review um, uh, by Bob Edwards and the Edwards review recommended the establishment for the first time anywhere in Australia of an organisation, a government funded organisation dedicated to history. In this case, dedicated to South Australia's history. Mm its history largely since European colonisation uh, because, of course, back 40 years ago, our consciousness and awareness about the 60,000 years of, of Aboriginal uh, occupation of the land and settlement and, and uh, living within the land uh, was not so, not so well appreciated as... Well, as it wasn't it shared as much now. either. That's I think. correct. It's That's really correct. a two-way conversation, isn't it? Yeah, no, but getting back to you before the bookshop. So before the bookshop. So um, I had uh, gone from high school uh, into... Um, actually, it, I was a retail trainee, management trainee at Coles, which was <laughs> basically code for... You work 80 hours a week and get paid 36 right. hours a week. Um, and it took me about three months to realise maybe, maybe this gap year thing isn't all it's cracked up to be. I might go to uni. So I went to Flinders University, uh, did an undergraduate arts degree. Two thirds of the way through, I, I think I, it's fair to say I, d I discovered the sins of, um, of, of life and, uh, I, and I withdrew from university and went and got a job. Um, that job was as a, a, a retail management uh, cadet and then subsequently executive with Meyer. Right. Um, so I was a divisional furniture buyer for Meyer. Got to travel first class under ANSET ANA. 
back in the day. Um, and wonderful? Uh, Travelled not only interstate but also internationally on buying trips. That was great oh fun. right, okay. Yeah. And um, then I left there to go backpacking for a year uh, as you around do. Europe, yes. as you do. Um, that's the grand tour, isn't it? The, the grand tour. The big thing. That's, that's exactly mm. correct. Um, and that was an amazing, enriching life experience. When I returned, uh, I wanted to finish my degree and that meant going back to university part-time and um, by that st at that stage in that year 1984 uh, my father and stepmother and a, a long-time friend of theirs Patricia Sykes uh, had begun to plan to open imprints right. and um, so I swang in uh, swang in there and started um, uh, unpacking boxes on Easter of 1984 <laughs> and a, a week later they opened their doors and I started working as a weekend casual uh, right. and within six months they'd offered me a partnership in the business because I had learnt retail right. uh, management and theory and my stepmother uh, Gail was a divisional buyer for Meyer, uh, for David Jones uh, in the book department and thus the, the book connection. Right. So the that family kind of came in to, into the book trade and uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful life. Uh, Genteel poverty, absolutely. <laughs> that, that no one, no one gets rich. Isn't it a shame? Books. But isn't it a shame when you think about it that those bookshops are going or gone? Mm. Speaking of going or gone, we just have to go for a tick, and we'll be back with Greg Mackey. Our special guest on this episode of our time is Greg Mackey. Greg. Um, I've talked to you before on this program about many various things, but you've done like a full circle in life because you were with the Adelaide City Council. I was. And now... Was. And so I guess I served a term on the uh, Council of the City of Adelaide from 2000 to 2003. Back then I was a shopkeeper uh, and I had started the Adelaide Festival of Ideas and I'd just finished a decade uh, as chair of uh, Adelaide Writers Week programming uh, committee. And um, then fast forward 2020, in the middle of the COVID lockdown, there's a by-election through a casual vacancy uh, created and I contested it and got re-elected. So I'm, I'm back as a city councillor uh, on top of my various other... Oh, your various uh, other things. You've been the CEO of Arts SA, the yes. Festival of... Of ideas. Ideas. Uh, I was being deputy chief. And that's executive. when Sandy, our current Lord Mayor, was working with you, that's wasn't That's correct, yeah, yes. in 2011 and then again in 2018. I, I was deputy chief executive in the Department of Premier and Cabinet for a number of years. Then I did freelance consulting for three years when I was made to walk the plank um, by <laughs> a former Premier. And um, uh, ironically, because you walk out with a nice big fat compensation check and then because they know they don't know what you know they hire you back on a casual basis to tell them what you know and um, <laughs> so I found myself consulting. Politics is a funny it beast. It is a funny, it? funny funny beast. So I, I, the, did, the, yeah. I think a very valid point with you is you've been in so many of these executive capacities you're you are a mover and a shaker you've always been a mover and a shaker but one of the people that maybe isn't up front but being able to read the public needs, tastes, uh, progression, as you are with the History Trust. Well, um, in a sense, the History Trust is an extension of my years as a bookseller, Malcolm, because I was the purveyor of fine things. I was a mediator of a whole lot of conversations, thousands of conversations, counterculture is what I called it, over, right. the, over the counter at Imprints. And, yeah. oh, okay. and, and I presented oh, a yeah. program. I like that. A, a, I presented a program of uh, talks with visiting writers called the Imprints PM Club. And that we played to tens of thousands of guest audiences and hundreds of guest writers um, over a more than a decade. Um, With Writers so, Week. Uh, and then Writers Week as well, presenting you know one of the world's great literary festivals mm. um, uh, in Adelaide. And that's something that uh, we should be more proud of, we should be more aware of and cherish and, and, and shout about. Um, well, as we were talking about before, this program is so valuable for both here in South Australia and should be for the whole of the country if we were still 
uh, being around the country, but also in Victoria, because community television is one of the last bastions of being able to talk about what happens in our own backyard. That's that's ex exactly right. And uh, in the same way as your program for so many years now has shone a bright light on things that are more granular and more local and would very, mm. very easily in a world that's nationally and internationally media controlled uh, would be missed out. And so well, my, also we have the time to talk. That's right. It's not a three minute bite that's on a right. news service. And my, my job with the History Trust is about giving the past a future now. Um, my mission uh, is to help South Australians and visitors uh, uh, take it acquire an interest in the, the journey of this place mm. because there are some very, very remarkable and unique aspects of, of the South Australian experiment that were not replicated in uh, other states. I'm so glad you said that, the word experiment, because so many South Australians don't realise that's how this state began. This was an experiment. It was a mm. social experiment, a place, it was give me a tired, give me your, your, your victimised, uh, give me, if you're fleeing religious persecution, uh, as there were a lot of people, mm. Salesians from uh, uh, Prussia uh, left, uh, uh, left their homes in Europe in the 19th century and they came to South Australia. They settled in the Barossa Valley and Klemzig and the places acquired the names that reflected their language. Yes. Um, and then, of course, when World War I, uh, happened. Uh, all of those names got anglicised and a very yes. small, much smaller number of them after the end of World War II reverted to their their, their Deutsch uh, origins. Well, a lot of people wouldn't realise that, I guess, because That's of right. that change. Well, Handorf is Handorf again, but during the war it was Ambleside. Yes. Uh, and that's yes. just one example. Well, there's still an amble side to the side, isn't there? That is there? correct, yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, it's fascinating. And so my, my, the mission of my organisation and my fabulous team of committed um, professionals uh, is, is to shine a brighter light on South Australia's stories uh, because we're storytellers mm. at the end of the day. Museums, yes, they may have glass display cases with stuff in them, um, but it's actually the stories that the, 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 that, that stuff... Uh, makes real uh, that that is the reason why we why we exist mm. i was uh, working within an organization with a, a body of people as you would be all the time and one of the members said every time you talk about the past i turn off so that actually prompted me to leave the organization because i thought you're missing the whole point here of how we move forward because we don't know how to move forward until we can look backwards yeah. so and, and i also think and it, this is maybe a little esoteric but part of the reason why as human beings and we're the only species on the planet perhaps except for the bowerbird who collects things we, we are collectors. We are a, we we are are. a species. Don't that come to my house. Stuff. Don't come to my we house. We are absolutely a species that collects stuff. And part of the reason I, I think why we do that is because we're afraid of dying. And we collect Valid. things to make permanent our presence in the, in, in the universe's journey. Um, well, it's it, true. It's, you know, I've talked to a lot of people with fabulous backstories and I always say, are you writing about this? Are you keeping a record of this? Mm. Where are the photos? Where are the videos? Where are the whatever you've got? Because we'll be forgotten in a generation that, that's if we don't correct. leave something. Yep. Yeah, yep. I've never thought of it in that sense that you just said, the bowerbird sense, but it makes perfect sense. And, and history and ideas and the history of ideas, I guess that's the thing that I have been most fascinated about. And mm. in various roles over the decades, I've tried to shine a light. I've tried to give space, create spaces where, where it can happen. And so thus mm. uh, the Adelaide Festival of Ideas, I, I morphed out of the Adelaide Writers Week Literary Festival. And the motive for that was a, I believe it's played to a very strong uh, experiment, a tradition of experimentation that you referred to earlier about the, the underpinnings of the founding of the province of South Australia mm. uh, and our propensity for, despite being perceived uh, as deeply conservative, that is because we resist change. It's a paradox in, in life that 
Everybody wants the world to be better, but nobody wants anything to change. To change. And so that, right. that tension uh, helps to keep, I guess, keep us from jettisoning, jettisoning everything that is important. Uh, it can at times hold us back, mm. uh, but there has always been this, this underbelly of experimentation and reform that mm. has informed the shaping of our psyche, I think, in South Australia, and even with the waves of migration that came after the Second World War, uh, the hopes and the aspirations and the willingness to roll sleeves up and get down mm. in the muck and, and work hard to build a future, that, that's actually also something that honours our founding uh, DNA as well. Quite. And the good thing about that is it's been not just, you know, the, the desire to achieve, but it's been the changes in our food, in the way that we're entertained, Indeed. just in so many aspects of All of those things, of which life. are all a part of culture. I'm, mm. I'm, not, I'm not an elitist wanker who believes that the only thing that is culture is the high-end arts, you know, mm. opera, etc. cetera. Uh, that is an aspect and a manifestation and expression of culture. But culture is just everything we do that makes us human. It's the food yeah. we eat. It's the it way we prepare the food. It's the, it's the it's how wine and celebration are, are marked. In, in oh, and our the integration existence. of people from all over the world. That's it's correct. just that wonderful yeah. thing. Now we've got a couple of very special announcements to make when we come back after this short break with Greg Mackey. Welcome back with Greg Mackey. We've got some important announcements to make. Indeed, we do, Malcolm. Um, over the years, and we've touched on a couple of the uh, things that I've been involved with beyond, above and beyond my day job, uh, the Adelaide Festival of Ideas, which was cruelly defunded um, by the former government, and um, I rescued it and uh, formed an incorporated association and we, we, we presented a festival on the smell of an oily rag in 2016 and again in 2018. We would have presented one last year at the second little year. Virus got in a the little way. virus got in the way. And um, so I'm pleased now that the, that the news is public that there will, will be a, an Adelaide Festival of Ideas this month, uh, this year, in mid-July. It will be the centrepiece of the South Australian Government's new midwinter festival called Illuminate Adelaide. And the Adelaide Festival of Ideas will be right there in the heart of it, uh, presenting uh, interesting talks and panels and debates oh, and discussions. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, th that, is, that is one thing. And given that festivals seem to be what we do so well <laughs> yes, in, we in do. Adelaide. Even I do cabaret, a festival. Uh, the, um, the Cabaret Fringe. Uh, will will be now presented. suddenly you're involved with that now too. Yeah, as... yeah I chair the board of, of um, the Cabaret Fringe. Um, we rescued that when La Boheme uh, Cabaret Room was dying, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, again COVID got in the way last year. And we're looking did. forward to the first couple of weeks of of June mm -hmm. in the lead into the Festival Centres Cabaret Festival, presenting that. And of course, I, I would be. I'd be lynched if I didn't mention um, my History Trust of South Australia's statewide South Australia's History Festival, which operates for the entire month of May. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of um, uh, community groups across South Australia, regional, metro and capital city, uh, who uh, are so excited to be presenting uh, events for the public uh, to amazing. learn more about our history. It's amazing. And the grants that you've been able ab to provide. Look, ab absolutely. Um, look, over the last 40 years of the History Trust, more than $6 million of grants have been made uh, to support smaller uh, community groups and individuals doing research or publication uh, on South Australia's fascinating history. And uh, that we have new rounds this year um, and I would encourage people to go to the History Trust website and uh, look up uh, look up about our grant programs. There's the History Club, uh, the History, say it again, <laughs> History website right there. So, Greg, thank you so much for joining it's been us. It's a pleasure, the, There is actually so much to talk about and in the coming few months we will be talking more with people that are involved with the History Trust uh, because there's so many special anniversaries coming up and other celebrations. It's been lovely to have your company with us this time and our time. So until next time, keep yourself nice till then. We'll see you later.